So uh, our next speaker will be uh, Alina Rubinstein Dunlop. Okay. So Alina is a professor of uh, uh, physics at the University of Queensland and director of the translational research program at the ARCCOE, whatever it means for engineering quantum system. Okay. So I mean, uh, just a, a, a few words about Alina because I mean, again, I mean, she did a very, very nice experimental. Uh, uh, re she, she got very nice experimental results in a, in a field which is dear to me, quantum chaos, and about this uh, chaos assisted tunneling uh, uh, oscillations. Okay. So now she, she will be uh, talking to us about uh, um, some probing and controlling strongly correlated matter with few photon fields. So, Alina, maybe you can share your slides. Okay. And All right. So, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to give this talk about sculpted light in quantum optics. So, as, as, as uh, was mentioned, Christian mentioned, I'm from University of Queensland in Brisbane, Australia. So, Antipodes and uh, ARC, what you were reading, COE, is Center of Excellence. So, it's a collection of five universities, people from five university universities who are trying to uh, proceed with science in engineered quantum systems. So let me start here. Um, so uh, what I would like to cover today is I would like to talk why we want to use sculpted light in quantum atom optics. And then we heard from Tillman already that there are big difficulties in constructing the fields to our liking. So let's see whether we can contribute to that. And uh, then we can also uh, discuss uh, from, from a, a Gretchen Campbell's talk, we learned that having very, uh, very nicely formed potentials which are very even and very well controlled is of great importance, especially if you want to make say uh, rotational sensors after, uh, out of them. So uh, I want to touch upon that. And then I want to tell you a little bit about how to create the best images. So what sort of corrections and feedback systems I have to use to do that. And then I want to start using those potentials for several interesting questions. And it's a little bit of atomtronics. So this is an experiment that we have done a few years ago and quantum thermodynamics and the gas phase of vortex matter. So in our lab, what we have are, are two separate experimental setups, which in both of them, we can create configurable optical potentials. And one is based upon acousto-optic modulator. So I'm painting here, here uh, time average optical potential. So I, I, I have my atoms in a sheet of light here. And then with the laser, I paint uh, the potential to my liking. So in this case, a large ring, just the ring that, that um, aggression wanted to have. And we can have feedback control over it. So create very, very even potential. So that's one method. And the other one is using digital micro mirror devices. And what we are seeing here is our atomic system, our BC system, and um, we can achieve a very high resolution images down to diffraction limit in the systems. Okay, so uh, how do people create structured light? Uh, what we want to, to, to be able to play with is intensity polarization in phase. And so I can use systems like physical masks, gratings, or holograms. And uh, for example, in NIST, uh, they use face imprinting solitons into a BC. We have heard about it uh, yesterday or two days ago. Uh, and uh, then uh, the use of Laguerre Gaussian modes has also been done, which carry orbital angular momentum, which was done in NIST and Cambridge. Now, with light, uh, spatial light modulators, uh, the uh, painted potential, optical potential is in Los Alamos, and we are doing it as well. And then uh, there, are, there, there are games with phase, liquid crystal, and amplitude uh, um, uh, things in DMD SLMs, 
and this is Ines, UQ, and many more labs. Okay, so how do I choose which device to use for my uh, flexible and well-controlled optical potentials? I, I said we can use liquid crystal SLM or we can use digital micromirror device. With both of them, we have techniques in which, which will enable us to control both phase and amplitude. Not straightforward, but it's do doable. So the question is, uh, what sort of um, uh, resolution we need, what sort of diffraction efficiency we need, what sort of speed, whether we want to do uh, 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 experiments in real time, very fast experiments, then, then the choice will be very clear. So for example, if the speed is of importance, I will definitely choose DMD or uh, acoustic optic deflector. Uh, Resolution-wise, uh, both DMD and liquid crystal SLMs are pretty similar or can be pretty similar. However, if I am after diffraction efficiency, then diffraction efficiency is the lowest for DMDs. But quite often that's not a problem because we have good enough lasers to supply us with being able to use very low diffraction limits. So uh, now I want to create very flexible potentials using this sort of device, uh, the DMD here. So I will try to tell you what I do with the DMD and then how I can uh, make the image look uh, the best uh, in the best possible way. So here's my DMD and what is DMD? DMD is a collection of tiny uh, mirrors which can wiggle with certain angle and that wiggle is controlled uh, very, very precisely so I can program it and, and I can achieve with that any geometry I want. So here what we are achieving is the Siemens star uh, which also enables us to check the, 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 the resolution uh, ability of this device. And then I can take the light which I have created on my DMD and put it into my uh, uh, BEC. So here is my, uh, my um, a sheet of light uh, in which I have my BEC and I come with my DMD with a, a, a specific a geometry of my um, optical potential and I, uh, I put my BEC into that particular potential into my light key. Okay, so, uh, so what happens is that uh, we can easily create binary images. So here we see a binary image being created. And then the easiest way to create a binary image is from a target image is to, to do it by thresholding the image. We can do it with binary potential or we can, uh, we can do it with multiple tones. This introduces a substantial a quantization effort, uh, 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 errors, which make the image look a little bit off-putting. So you can see that the image is starting to look pretty bad. So what can I do? I can now uh, apply Floyd Steinberg uh, dithering. And what I do is, uh, uh, is I take the error from rounding the pixels and distribute it to the surrounding pixels within, within this matrix. And we do it round first pixel and distribute the error, and then round second pixel and distribute the error again till we uh, do it with every pixel. And here we see all pixels built being rounded. And so if we apply that, this is, uh, I, I do one tone Floyd dithering and then I can apply four tone uh, dithering and you can see that there is improvement in the image. And uh, we can use the same method with a number of tones, much larger number of tones. So let's look at that. And, uh, and uh, here uh, are the same images for comparison. In, and in the system where binary potential is convoluted with the point spread function, it gives us the effect of blurring the image. If we squint with our eyes a bit, we'll see that the, how the image looks. Okay, so original image, desert image, and blurred image. You have so uh, the resolution of this image is quite impressive, although it looks a little bit grainy still, 
But if you imagine that the eye of Mona Lisa here is actually uh, about one micron. So the resolution of the system is pretty good. All right, so we have done that. Now I can, uh, this can be used to produce arbitrary tone gray potentials, this method. And in addition, I can also use another technique where we explore fast switching technique to create multiple tones. So I'm switching my DMD very, very quickly and we can then create gray tones as well when the frames are averaged out. Okay, and so uh, I cross stitch and I use half, ton uh, half tones and, uh, uh, and th they have very nice properties because the, each image is a low resolution image of a full image over all the captured features. Each individual pixel switches the fastest it possibly can at the frequency of approximately 4,000 Hertz when the atoms can no longer see the individual changes of the individual mirrors and are not heated in, uh, uh, during the switching. And so if we apply that method, I can create arbitrary gray tone potentials. So here is Guerenica, Picasso's Guerenica. And of course, if you come from Australia, you have to have a good, a good image of koala. Okay. And then I continue with, with perfecting uh, my images and then putting the BC into those pot uh, optical potentials by uh, uh, using something which we call uh, correcting aberrations in the projection system using the feed forward algorithm. So, uh, so this is what we do here, feed forward algor algorithm. I have target image, I then have no feedback, and then I have correction map, which is the difference between them. And uh, while I do my feedback, what, I, what is done is I take the projection light, I apply Floyd dithering, and I had corrected target. I capture the image, correct, apply a correction map, image minus target, and then I have a good image, which we can see here. So what we have achieved here is the, uh, the with Floyd dithering, we can see great improvement in the uh, image uh, created. And if we apply more than one tone uh, and feed forward, then you can see that this image is starting to look really good. Okay, so then we can go to the intermediate imaging plane and see how we can create uh, uh, those potentials with resolution, as I said, uh, of 0.5 microns in size. So another interesting thing is that I can also, um, uh, by, uh, by engineering the potentials to be a red channel of the image or green channel of the image or blue channel of the image, uh, 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 I can create color images. I can superimpose them on each other and then we can get our very fantastic Queensland uh, fish in, in real colors. So not that we need it for atom optics experiments, but if you want to make the gallery of pictures, which we are showing here, uh, then you can apply all those techniques and get very high resolution images. Uh, and what we are seeing here is basically, we now have uh, all those images of Mona Lisa or the uh, fish, um, exotic fish or ourselves in Bose-Einstein condensate. All right, so uh, now that we can produce those images to our liking, what can we do with them? Uh, image, not images, the Bose-Einstein condensate in those, uh, in those potentials. I can look at superfluid atomtronic circuits, for example. And uh, what I will be showing you here is highly tunable superfluid oscillator circuit of quantum gas. Uh, so uh, he, this is done in this, in this particular setup here, and this is the system that we will be studying. Okay, so, uh, and of course, it, we hope that it has potential applications in, in, in inertial and magnetic sensors and quantum simulations. So uh, this is the system that we model here. So I have, uh, 
atomic oscillator basically here and uh, uh, you can see that with a very low bias, uh, we creating shading the vortices a little bit, but not very much. But however, if I go up with initial bias, you can see that the shading of vortices is increasing very much through this particular uh, width and length of the channel. And what we observe then in both cases are the uh, Josephson's uh, dynamics in the system. And this is an experiment. Uh, so, so here uh, we or, uh, originally we put uh, our atoms into one of those dumbbells, and then we can uh, uh, generate different sizes and width of length and width of our channel, and then move the atom cloud with uh, sh uh, shredded um, uh, with the uh, vortices up and down. Uh, and you can see that there were many oscillations that we can get. And so, and that gives us opportunity of, uh, of building uh, acoustic model, um, of building an um, atomtronic circuit. And so what you are seeing here is that I basically have acoustic Helmholtz oscillator and I can vary the uh, uh, volume of this potential, uh, of this uh, dumbbell here I can vary the um, area of the opening of the channel. I can vary the size of the length of the channel, uh, etc. cetera. And um, uh, we can see that what we have constructed is a, a equivalence uh, between uh, uh, this LC circuit. And resulting frequency will be dependent upon the, uh, upon the area, uh, uh, cross-sectional area of the channel here and it will be uh, inversely proportional to the length of the channel and, and also dependent on the uh, volume of the two uh, uh, containers. Okay, so, uh, so here is the, the summary of acoustic model for an atomtronic oscillator. So I have here double shaped trap, as we said, I bias the, I bias the system with the magnetic gradient and, re and then I release the gradient and then I watch the oscillations. And what I, as I said, what I can do is to vary the size of, the, of this channel as well as varying the radius of the container. And uh, when we do that, we can observe oscillation frequency, which varies with channel uh, parameters. Uh, and we say that it can be modeled as an equivalent uh, circuit. And so uh, if we summarize what we are seeing here is that uh, we can uh, look at the frequency of oscillations as a function of length of the channel or width of the channel and compare it with the acoustic model. And the comparison is uh, a, a very good. And so we have created a model for predicting the behavior of more complex uh, superfluids. So uh, now I want to look at the vortices in, in, in uh, superfluids. So I want to study turbulence. And we know that uh, Lars Onsager in 1949 uh, was uh, uh, looking at two-dimensional flow, uh, said that two-dimensional flow leads to vortices piling together into larger and larger vortices. And that could be explanation of the yellow um, uh, uh, po um, uh, point on, on Jupiter. Uh, and, uh, and such states become more ordered uh, as the energy in the vortices increases. And that is characteristics of negative absolute temperature. So this is the system I want to look at uh, using my, uh, uh, my um, called uh, BC. So uh, you can see that we are talking about a negative absolute temperature, which is actually the hottest temperature we can have. And we are looking at the entropy behavior of the uh, uh, entropy as a function of energy. And we can see that these clusters uh, um, uh, uh, look like this uh, of vortices are separated and, and cluster, clusters are becoming bigger and bigger the lower the, and the lower the temperature till we reach the negative temperature. So for a gas of vortices, the states appear as a 
per persisting clusters of vortices, which uh, spatially co uh, contract uh, if the energy if is increasing. And so we can do it, uh, we can do it uh, experimentally. And this is the system that we are using here. And the system is that I am putting a paddle through uh, the condensate. So this is the condensate here. I'm putting the paddle through it and I'm observing the creation of vortices in this system. So I can compare two techniques. I can have paddle stir or I, and this is the paddle stir here. Okay, it's coming. So paddle stir here. So it's high energy injection and we can see what happens with created vortices. Uh, so this, uh, the red is one sign of vortices and then the blue is the other sign of vortices. Thank you, yes. And then I can have low energy injection and this low energy injection is presented here. Uh, and uh, this is done with the uh, grid and we can see that the uh, uh, production of vortices uh, is not clamped to big uh, 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 parts of the system. So we can summarize it and we, what we have shown, uh, we have shown the clustering uh, is persistent and vortex anti vortex separation inhibits annihilation and mapping to point vortices reveals high energy. So, and then we can, uh, we can uh, compare it with uh, the, the, uh, the models and, uh, and assuming that I know the signs, a sign of my uh, uh, vortices, uh, I can uh, compare, determine the energy mapping to point vortices and uh, see how the clusters remain deep in the negative temperature region throughout the evolution. Okay, so I'm running out of time, but I wanted to tell you that what we were able to do is that uh, ex this experiment has demonstrated broad capability uh, of uh, injecting vortices with a particular configuration of energy. And uh, the neutral system is only one possible configuration of vortices. What about the others? And the lingering question that stays unanswered is about equilibrium. What about far from equilibrium uh, uh, initial conditions? And so I hope that I have uh, a minute or two to tell you a little bit more about the latest experiments that we do. So here we are looking at the phase of chiral vortex matter. So um, what we are looking at here is the solid uh, phase for, of vortex matter, the apricot of uh, lattice. And uh, we can note that we have only a single sign of vortices here. And this is the Hamiltonian that describes the system when we had that circulation is quantized, circulation is H bar over M and the, uh, and the angular momentum is given by this uh, uh, formula here. And we can see that interaction energy here is dependent upon the uh, 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 where the, uh, the vortices are placed in the, in the structure. And then we have the point vortices and momentum, which is given by this formula here. And so I will skip that and just go to our system here. So um, what, we, uh, uh, what we are doing here is uh, we are uh, um, uh, looking at the gas phase of chiral point vortices. And it's very similar to the Onsager approach. And so uh, he, uh, so the, the phase will be characterized by dilute high energy configuration. Oh, uh, and here we again focus on the single sign uh, chiral system. And this is a similar picture to emerges for the chiral system negative temperature clustering. And, um, and in, in this figure, what you can see is that A describes uniform Rankine distribution, B Gaussian, B is the Gaussian distribution, and um, when and, and C, C is a Ricotti um, situation at rotation frequency of zero, and then D is off axis max the bifurcation uh, 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 situation. And then if we create this chiral vortices, 
they can be on axis here, they can be off axis, or the, it can be uh, double vortices here as well. And so uh, if we continue with the system, we have here, we have here high, uh, high energy cluster states, which are associated with off axis equilibrium uh, states and multi clusters, which I showed you here. Okay, and this high energy is dilute states of vortex matter have so far eluded uh, experimentation. So uh, I will skip that and just show you, uh, sh show you the results and I'll go directly to the experimental results. So what we do is we do the side sweep. So we create an off axis cluster and what you can see here is the sequence of side sweep near um, point vortex equilibrium. And this is the phase and this is the created uh, uh, chiral structure. And then I can have double sweep and that's, you see the result of it. And then I can have persistent current sweep. And um, so we, uh, we have the initial condition is multi quantum vortex that rapidly breaks up initially from, from, far from equilibrium, but then close to the ax axiosymmetric equilibrium. And that's, uh, and uh, uh, this are the experimental results here, which you can see. And um, yeah. And in our five and, minutes. Uh, yes, and um, uh, I will skip that. I don't know what's happening here. I didn't want to do this. How do I get out of this? Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I show you here uh, the final final slide, which is showing you the the after sweep uh, 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 vortex histograms. So you can see here that uh, I uh, have histogram of vortex position here in the middle, and then side sweep gives me this uh, rotating uh, um, cario um, uh, vortices. And uh, uh, yes, and with that, I will thank you for your attention. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much, Alina. Thank you very much. Okay, I can see that the question and answer chat box, there is one question. So, so, so uh, may, may, maybe Alina, you, you, you can read or you yes, want to- Yes, I can read them. Uh, paddle and grid steering, why is the paddle case uh, called high energy and the grid is called low energy. I would have thought opposite. Uh, maybe I, I think you are right. It's other, other way around. Yes, absolutely right. I'm sorry. Um, is this possible to optically rotate like in a Ferris optical wheel with stability a dilute gas of bosonic atoms between one kilohertz to say megahertz in order to generate a fictive pseudo magnetic field about the magneton bore, wow, i.e. one megahertz for one gauss. Hmm, I'm not sure about that actually. I don't know. It would be nice though, is that any vortex pair annihilation, oops, while they, they form separate clusters in the case of grid steering? Uh, no. No, not really. They sort of big, bigger, big, bigger clusters. Uh, I would have a, a question. Okay, yeah. Alina, when you do this nice experiment with a dumbbell potential and, 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 and this uh, little channel between the two, did you study, I mean, the, the super, uh, the super uh, fountain superfluid effect? No, no. So we, we can see, we can see very definitely the oscillation between the oscillations yeah. between the two, two uh, but super fountain effect, we have not been able to see. Any other question? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. I ask. I ask question. <laughs> okay. So I want to to, to offer and say uh, on uh, BMD. So uh, can you please summarize what you uh, can do in terms of uh, dynamics? So 
what are the real capabilities of the DMD uh, device when you want to change the potential, uh, dropping potential online, mm -hmm. so in, in course of the same experiment? Yes, so uh, potentially you can do it, but the question is um, that if you do it really fast, the question is how fast you can read out what you have done. So uh, uh, in principle, you should be able to do dynamic uh, um, uh, uh, potentials with the speed that the, uh, uh, the um, DMD uh, is, uh, is able to work. However, in practice, it is very difficult to do. Mm. So it is not very fast. So what, what do you mean by, by that? So it's a uh, 10 microseconds, 15 microseconds, 100 microseconds? Um, of that order of magnitude, I would have thought. Well, um, Maybe sufficient. It's it's not too bad, but uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it's a step along the way. Okay, thanks. Okay, are there any other questions? No, I don't see. Okay, anyway, you can still use the, the chat box and to answer Alina a question. She can answer later. Okay. So thank you very much, Alina, for this really, uh, and I enjoyed very much your talk and about all the section about the, the picture, the, the way you, you massage them and, and create them in this wonderful uh, optical poten potential for, for, for the atom, really, really nice, okay.